Well, let's talk now to Giulio Terzi, Italy's former foreign minister, who was also ambassador to Washington and the UN. Uh, thank you so much for being here on the program. Your immediate response to that report and all of that horrifying detail we were just listening to. Thank you to you and thank you to your organization, to BBC, for this extraordinary document, an extraordinary uh, set of evidences which show what is the real condition of the Uyghur population in Xinjiang and what is the kind of persecution in every possible way through a strategy which is very much in uh, similarity with those uh, strategies of genocide that uh, we know, unfortunately, in the darkest moments of the European history and other, uh, other areas in the world. So this is really appalling what we have seen today in your documentary. And it is even more disconcerting because there has never been up to now uh, enough reaction from the international community. I'll, and, uh, and, oh, I'll come yes. to what the reaction should be in a moment, but uh, this is what Uyghurs have been saying for years, uh, uh, but they've been ignored. And in Italy, it's worse because you had a senior representative from the Uyghur community come a few years back, and they ended up being detained, didn't they, as they came to actually detail their accounts and their evidence. That was shameful, wasn't it? Exactly. Dolko Nisa, the president of the World Uyghur Congress, came in July 2017 to Rome to be heard by the Italian Senate. And just before entering the Senate's door, he was stopped by uh, Italian police and uh, Italian specialized agents because they were giving hints, very likely, from the Chinese embassy in order to prevent him to give his testimony to the Senate and to the Italian parliament. So it is shocking. That was three and a half years ago. And now the situation here in Rome is even worsened because so the Chinese embassy but so, the Chinese authorities are doing the same all the time. So now it can't be argued in terms of the detail of what is happening on the ground. China, though, continues to flatly deny any of this. So what should the international community do, given that this policy appears actually to be accelerating? The international community and some countries are in the front line for this. What is happening in Xinjiang is a genocide. And it must be defined and approached like that. There must be coherent and uh, uh, strong policies to address this issue and to stop it. The first one is the recourse to the Magnitsky Act every possible, uh, every time this is possible. And the governments must do, uh, take uh, uh, the, this opportunity of using a global Magnitsky legislation wherever they exist. And where, where it doesn't exist, the governments must adopt it quickly in order to address, first of all, the genocide in Xinjiang. Then there is also national initiatives. And it's very important, uh, the genocide amendment, uh, which was brought forward in the uh, UK parliament. And this is something which must be yep. followed at the European level, on the European side, by all the 27 uh, in, in their legislation. Really briefly, we heard in that account one of the women say uh, what was happening was that women were being destroyed, the Uyghurs were being destroyed, uh, the shame of it, the trauma, their resilience. Uh, the blunt truth at the moment is this policy appears to be succeeding. It is a policy, and it is a policy, a policy and a strategy which is implemented by strong determination by the Chinese authorities. It's not only uh, rapes, uh, tortures against women, uh, uh, forced labor, which is another very important element to address, since uh, the European Union has just signed a preliminary signature of a, a comprehensive agreement on investment with China. This has been really a very wrong move, but we. We have to see that uh, the elimination of the uh, Uyghur and the Muslim identity goes through other violences against women. The first 
another terrible violence is the realization of women in age for having children. This yes. is something which is one of the worst crimes of humanity that one, one can imagine. Yes, there are so many shocking allegations uh, in this piece. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador, for joining us here on the programme. And just a pointer, because you can read the BBC's exclusive report on the Uyghurs with extended eyewitness accounts and analysis. Just go to our website at bbc.com and uh, it is there in the World News China section. A really distressing read. Now let's turn to uh, breaking news of the last few hours because